and welcome back. Oh no. It's starting again. It's amazing. Everything's changing. Everything. Someday I think we... Everything is mutating. Yeah. And I haven't even moved. I, I don't understand. I don't understand anything. Welcome back to another gameplay video. Someday I think we need to do something in that uh, special dimension where we see the future and the past. Something is really intriguing by those sequences. I think they are important, but I can't really figure out why. Uh, last time uh, we got stuck, really stuck, and didn't find the damp ground. But outside of the... Oh no! Here comes that sensation again! It's Didn't find the damp ground outside of the suicide park. Good God. Uh, and uh, after we got unstuck there, we uh, were able to find a way to get into the saddlebags by uh, recruiting the children to shoot at the sentries. And uh, we have also been down this hole over here, uh, fetching the lion's head above fire, and uh, also delivered that to uh, the Reverend. And we have a lot of new items. We have the rubber gloves. Um, perhaps we could use those to go over barbed wires. We have uh, the sign for some reason, we have a seat cover and a slingshot. So, and also the crowbar, we found that the crowbar could be used for a lot of stuff. So let's see here if we can use the gloves perhaps on the bars. Uh, the entire world is collapsed. Why would I care in the least about leaving fingerprints here? I don't, know. I don't think doing this. Let's see here. Seat cover. Use this here. Okay. Oh, let's see here. Could we use this on the panel? Use this chain? here. How? No. Here. This quilted fabric fits the size of the window perfectly. What? Okay, try to break the window with sign. I doubt I'd accomplish anything using the pieces of the metal sign with that. Crowbar? Okay, let's try this. <laughs> and let's cross our fingers that the seat cover absorbs the noise of the breaking glass. If the soldiers next door find me, they'll blow my head off without bothering to ask questions. Let's hope so. <sighs> You've done it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm safe now. God bless you, stranger. You saved my life. Take care of yourself, old man. And I don't have to tell you, don't open the door to strangers. Okay. That wasn't what I was expected, expecting. This house already has an owner. Let's leave things the way they are. Okay, but we've got the bolt cutters. Great. Now let's try that vegetation again. Oh my god, that took a while to find. Ooh, Jesus. Ah. I'll see here. But it makes sense now that you know the solution, but oh. Okay, see here. Let's see if we can use this. Let's see what's on the other side of this hedge. Yay! Oh, that doesn't sound good. Oh! No! Please! More visions? Uh, my head! You won't get any of his things! I won't allow it! Do you hear me? 
Michael, is that you? Thank God we found you. It's me, Chris. Don't you recognize me? But there is a solution, Michael. All is not lost. There is still a possibility of salvation for us. For each and every one of us. You have to stop this, Michael. You have to quit. I can't do it. It's destroying us, don't you see? It's killing us. It's a demon inside me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. These visions are getting more intense all the time. The pain is unbearable. Who's Chris? Salvation is still possible, he said. Could that be true? And once again, that female voice has been haunting me since I woke up. Who is she? Why was she so distressed? What the hell happened to us? Or is going to happen to us? Okay. That was a really strange vision. Uh, what? He burned a lot of stuff because he didn't want them to take any of the stuff. Could this be a child that has died and Michael doesn't know, want the authorities to take the stuff from his child, which seems a bit strange. And this woman was trying to get him to stop with his addiction and he couldn't. So he some someday just went out and forgot everything because he couldn't cope anymore. So could this be some weird coping mechanism? Oh no. I don't want it's to like see this again. Over it. I did. Seems like every time you stay in one place a little bit too long, you will get a new vision of something. Okay, so now we are at the electrified fence. Mm. Nice. We don't have any way of getting past it, but maybe we could use the gloves. Okay, I'll wear the gloves to cut the electrified wire. Yeah. Hope we don't die. Perfect. Whoa. That worked. Seems a bit weird. Let's see what's down here. It's a trapdoor. And it looks like it hasn't been used in a long, long time. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Anything else here? No. Oh. Ooh. So this is where we went down. Yeah. Okay. So we have a dark room and a light room. I guess we won't go into the dark room. This door leads to a dingy back room. What the hell could be in here? I can hear the buzz of electricity coming from inside, but I can't figure out anything more without a little more light. Okay, so we won't go in there, but perhaps there's something back here. Whoa! Jesus. Here is a lot of people. And... Some of them dies. Is this the dissolved? Perhaps? What is this place? Where the devil am I? It seems like the small building at the ground level is just camouflage. The most important part is here underground. Are all of them dissolved? How many patients can there be packed in here? Dozens? Hundreds? This is horrible! I guess so. Let's see what's acid jug. Okay. And a ventilation gate. Okay, we'll take that first. Oh, Jesus. Mm. This place or this 
game really have some strong... Okay, let's see if I can open this. Strong visuals. <sighs> Perfect. It looks like this hole leads to a passageway on the other side. Okay, let's see if we can do anything here. Black bag. Could be useful. The janitor's cart. It's sagging from the weight and so dilapidated that I doubt this janitor's cart has many more trips left in him. See if we A tiny lock is preventing me from opening the door, and despite its size, it seems to be very strong. Okay, so we've got a lock. Um, cut I don't it. think I gain anything by using this here. Nope. Let's see if we can open it. Well, I'm not going to open it this way. I don't see any cracks in the door big enough to get any leverage. Okay. Acid? It won't open that way. <laughs> Most things will. It has a side zipper that's open. The lining of the bag is damp and sticky. What the hell could they have been keeping inside it? People? Perhaps? Ah. I don't see how I can use this with this piece of glass. I'd only end up scratching it. I'd rather not do that. The acid would do its corrosive work, and then I wouldn't have it anymore. Okay. Better not. I'm an intruder in this building, and it's under the army's control. Going down to the main hall of the hospital will be walking straight into the lion's den. Okay, see if we can go in here. A row of anonymous ramshackle lockers. I get the impression that everything in here could fall apart at any moment. Maybe in solidarity with those poor unfortunates screaming in the main hall. Mm. Unlike his neighbors, this door is hanging open. All I see inside are remnants of stickers and torn photographs. It looks like someone left in a hurry, without even saying goodbye. Okay. Let's see, the po poster might be have something interesting. The future is in our hands. Collaborate, rebuild, report. From the text, I say this poster must have been part of a government campaign launched after the Great Wave. Okay. Might not be. The real way to go? The floor of this place is one big revolting ashtray. It's a little disconcerting to note that cleanliness is not exactly a top priority in the hospital. Well, they have the bigger things to think about, I guess. Let's see what's over here? Locked, of course. I'm starting to get annoyed with this sense of ownership I see in all the people with closets, lockers, and other storage furniture in the city. This glass cabinet has dozens of medications stored inside. Classified by type, antibiotics, anti-inflammatory drugs, diuretics, and, hmm, painkillers. Okay. Let's I'd rather use a key to open this case, but I'm a bit short on time, so... Who is it? Who's there? Oh, uh, excuse me, I... What are you doing here? Have you come to steal something? Take one more step and I'll call the soldiers. No, wait, please, don't do that. Security, this is Nurse Uma Grundy. I need you to come right away. No, wait! Mm. Mm. See what's the most reasonable thing to say. Uh, I thought the first priority of the people in the medical profession was save lives. And you're going to get me killed? That seems like a good way to start a conversation, I guess. I thought the first priority of people in the medical profession was to save lives. And you're going to get me killed. Don't you dare judge me. You have no idea what we're going through in here. Our priority is our patience. And yours should be to get out of here as fast as you can, if you value your life. Okay. I'm not a thief. Steal? No, you're wrong about me. I'm not a thief. You just broke the glass on one of our pharmacy cabinets. What am 
I supposed to think? There's a reasonable explanation for all of this. I promise you. You'd better be convincing when those soldiers get here. I can hear them coming now. Come on, get out of here now while you still have time. <sighs> you can't turn me in. Those soldiers will kill me if they find me here. You should have thought of that before you walked into this trap. You'd better save your breath and get out of here fast before those savages get here. Wait a minute, did you say Uma? Nurse Uma? Wait a minute, did you say Uma? Nurse Uma? Yes, that's my name. Wait, please don't turn me in. I know your father. I saved his life just a few hours ago. They were going to deport him to the refugee camp, but I was able to stop it. My God, did you say my father? Tell me, how is he? Has anything happened to him? Don't worry, Uma. He's safe. He told me about you and your work in this place. He was worried. He'll want to know that you're all right. Wait, please don't turn me in. This is Nurse Uma Grundy. It turned out to be a false alarm. You don't have to come, thank you. Thank you, Uma. Interesting. You did the right thing. My name is Michael. But now you should explain why you burst in here like that. What are you looking for, Michael? I came to get medicine. I need a cure for the dissolved. Cure? There's no such thing. You won't find it here or anywhere else. The authorities distributed a memo among the medical staff months ago. I'm sure you can still find a copy of it around here somewhere. It told us that they've definitely abandoned the search for a medicine. You made a mistake risking your life to get in here. The only thing we store here is pain. This place is a tomb for those poor infected devils, but Ooh. also for the people who work here. I'm sorry, Michael. The dissolved are condemned to death. No, that can't mm. be. There has to be a solution, a cure. Oh man, poor Rod, poor Colin. Yep, that was kind of... Kind of waiting for that one. But I heard in the refugee camp, they said the cure was being produced and stored here. Condemned to die? Their cries of pain out there are really happening. What are really happening to the dissolved? <sighs> Condemned to die. I heard their cries of pain out there. What really happens to the dissolved? These people suffer the most excruciating pain and die in the most horrible way I've ever seen. The first symptoms are bouts of nausea and fainting which become more frequent and prolonged as the disease progresses. Until, in the end, their entire metabolism enters a state of shock. Then, their entire cell structure dissolves. It simply disintegrates. There's no medical explanation. It just happens. But there's something even stranger about the disease. What could be stranger than what you just told me? The dissolved become erratic, unpredictable, eccentric. They're uncontrollable. That's why the army fears them. They're afraid of their unpredictable behavior, but also of their strange messages. So the sole function of this place is to keep them locked away, hidden, and under the army's control. Until death takes them off their hands, one by one. It's also why people who harbor the dissolved are punished. And it's also the reason for the existence of the cleanup brigades. Okay. makes them unpredictable and dangerous. What is it that makes the dissolve so unpredictable and dangerous? They know, Michael. You probably think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, they know. They talk about events no one else knows about. They sense things. They bring back information from the places they go. And they talk to the dead there, Michael. They communicate with the dead. They, they know, Michael. That's all. They're just sick people, Uma. No! They're more than just ordinary sick people. You wouldn't talk like that if you had been living with them and their messages and their prophecies all these months. It seems like we got caught it. All these strange episodes that we got. Could we be dissolved? Uh, wait a minute.
I mean, it, did you say we that make prophecies? Wait. Did you just say the dissolved make prophecies? Let me tell you a story. When I first came to the center, I became friendly with a patient, a 13-year-old girl. All the time I was taking care of her, she never stopped chatting. She told me all about the underground highways. She said she went there every day. Underground highways? She said they all went there when they lost consciousness. Obviously, I felt great pity for the girl, but in time, I also came to feel tremendous... Fear. I was afraid of that poor, hopeless child. Her visions, her dreams, her messages terrified me. And then one night she sat down next to another patient, an older woman who looked surprisingly healthy. According to our calculations, this woman still had a few months to live. The woman had just lost consciousness. Leave me alone with her, the girl said to me. It won't be long now. And she took the woman's hand. And just seconds later, the woman started to dissolve, shrieking and writhing in pain, until there was nothing left of her but a puddle of brown, viscous liquid. The girl turned to me and said, I knew she was leaving us, and I didn't want her to go alone. That would have been very sad, wouldn't it, Uma? The girl's face was still dripping with the remains of the patient. She knew what was going to happen, Michael. She saw it. From then on, my fear became uncontrollable. I felt defenseless next to her. I understand. Finally, my panic was so great that I refused to go anywhere near her. And I even, God forgive me, I felt secretly relieved when she herself finally dissolved. They know, Michael. And that's why they're so dangerous to the people in power now. Okay. Hmm. know how they behave. The brigades. I've seen how they behave. They're savages. I despise them. They're like predatory animals, heartless and unscrupulous. The rest of the staff refuses to share the facilities with them, so their lockers are out in the hallway. That's where they keep everything they need for their hunting expeditions. The GPSs, the disease detection tests, their ID badges. Each unit is made up of two soldiers, one doctor and one nurse. I mean, doctors and nurses collaborating with those bloodthirsty animals. But then they say, what do you want? It's our job. And somebody's got to do it. Yes, that phrase sounds familiar. It's bone chilling. Police and criminals using exactly the same words to justify their actions. You gotta do what you gotta do. That seems to be the slogan of the executioners of this new world. Uh, okay. Mm. But I heard in the refugee camp, they said a cure is being produced and stored here. Well, if that's not the case, what's the purpose of a building like this? The army deliberately keeps that rumor about a possible cure alive. You see, as long as people still have some hope left, it is much easier to control the city more effectively. But it's a lie. I understand. This medical center was built just after the Great Wave, taking advantage of some abandoned underground facilities. That was when the authorities were beginning to work on their project to rebuild the city. They told us the building was going to be used to take in the first patients. Of course, we had no idea the disease would become so widespread. I left my job in a clinic downtown to come here. I wanted to lend a hand. They demanded total confidentiality about our work to avoid causing panic in the population. Not even my father knew what we were really doing in here. Yes, he told me that when I asked him about this place. At first, we treated the patients with great care. There was medicine to ease their suffering and even research into a possible cure. Everything was going smoothly. And then what happened? Things started to go wrong. When the number of patients multiplied, we couldn't keep up. And then we began to run out of even the most basic supplies. And that was when the army took over complete control of the center. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Then they sealed off the building. No one was allowed to leave, not even us. We doctors and nurses have been shut in here for months, isolated without even a glimpse of daylight. They say it's for security reasons. It's for our own safety. Oh yeah. Now our medical care is limited to wrapping up the patients in plastic bags, like the ones they use to transport cadavers, and then simply waiting for them to die. 
doing what little we can do to ease their suffering. Then we dispose of their remains, dissolving the black bags in acid for decontamination. And that's about it. That's all we can do with the resources we have. And sometimes it's just too much to bear. Okay. That's uh, a little bit more disturbing than the suicide forest. <laughs> but I thought they were just controlling the patients to keep the disease from spreading. But that's a lie. A blatant lie. The spread of the disease is accelerating. The number of cases is multiplying every day. But it's not contagious. We doctors and nurses have been treating the sick for months, in direct contact with them and their remains. And the rate of contagion among us is no higher than out there. The army is lying. But then, how is the disease spread? We don't know, Michael. No one knows. What we do know is that it's not caused by direct contact with the victims. There's another reason for the army's secrecy about the dissolved. Fear. It's human nature to fear the unknown. We tend to panic when faced with something we don't understand. And this damn disease is more than any of us can handle. Talk to my father, Michael. Tell him that I'm all right, that he shouldn't worry, that we'll be seeing each other soon, very soon. Okay. See if we can take the morphine. Oh, we just picked it up. Uh, switched on lamp. Okay. I guess we go talk to you father then. Uh... A tiny lock is preventing me from opening the door, and despite its size. Okay. What for? I'd only cutting my hand. I guess we need a key then. We come back to this. Well, uh, I think this is good for now. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time. Bye.